Mr. Campo. Absolutely. Councilman Carroll, we are now live streaming. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Good morning to everyone. And I would like to thank everyone for participating today in the February 26, 2021 City of Kenner Council meeting. And we have the honor and privilege of having Pastor Mitchell Stevens of the Pilgrim Baptist Church, which is one of the oldest churches in District 1 and maybe Jefferson Parish. But before the, the pastor says the invocation, uh, do we have any invocations? And I think the mayor said he had a couple first and then Councilman Segor. Thank you, Council Chairman. Um, we've had a death of one of our um, directors, um, mothers, Miss Sharon Elizabeth McDowell, that is our civil service um, director, Todd McDowell. We want to keep him and his family in our prayers, thoughts and prayers. And then we have a Parkways employee, Mr. Jeff Warner, he is hospitalized at this time in very serious condition. So we want to keep him up those in his family in our prayers. And I think, Mike, you have one. Yes. Councilman Mr. Gore. Yeah, um, like to recognize and say prayers for a 25-year veteran of the Kenner Police Department who unfortunately passed away shortly a week or so ago. He was very uh, active in various other components of the police department. He was a um, reserve, I mean, a rescue team member, as well as a honor guard. But most significantly, he was in the very first mounted division team when we were able to do a mounted division. And you could predominantly see him riding around on his horse uh, patrolling. So um, he passed away uh, just recently. Uh, also, he served as a volunteer firefighter. I don't want to miss that also. Uh, so with that, I want to make sure that we recognize his family and him in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, too, would like to ask for prayers for uh, Mr. Fred Jones and his family for he has gone on to glory. Mr. Jones has been a, a lifelong resident of Kenner. His wife, Miss Myrna Carter Jones, is a pre-K teacher at Washington <laughs> Elementary School. Their family have always been supportive in the community. And I ask you guys for prayers for Fred and for his family. And I would also like to introduce to the public, uh, Pastor Mitchell Stevens, pastor, senior pastor at Pilgrim Baptist Church, one of the oldest churches in the city of Kenner, possibly Jefferson Parish. And it is an honor to have Pastor Stevens here today to do the invocation, Pastor Stevens. Thank you so much. Councilman Carroll and to all of you, uh, good morning. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Holy, righteous, and loving God, we have come this day to give you thanks and praise for the many, many blessings that you have given unto us, God. We thank you for your love and we thank you for your protection. We thank you for your guidance, oh God, even through these turbulent times through this pandemic, oh God. I'm asking Oh, Master, a special blessing upon our mayor, our city council, and all of our elected officials, that you would allow them to make the proper decisions for our communities, uh, for those who are less fortunate, but certainly, oh God, for those who are in need. We ask the Master that you would remember and hear the petitions that were given, God. Bless families as they deal with the loss of loved ones. Uh, bless those, oh God, who are convalescing in hospital rooms, God. I know that you're able to do all things and do all things well. And so we give you thanks and praise and we just proclaim that it is well. And so we lift up this prayer this morning to you, God, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanks, Pastor. That was fantastic. Councilman Segor, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, sir? Thank you. If everyone will please draw me by placing your right hand on your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Madam Clerk, 
Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum under resolutions, motions, and other items from the floor. Mr. Chairman, I've received a request to add an item to the agenda um, at item 13B, which is a resolution requesting the city of Kenner dedicate 6th Street between Williams Boulevard and Compromise Street as the Marie Martin Clessy Way. Uh, if I could get a motion and a second to amend the agenda. I move. I motion. I have a motion by Council Member Segure, seconded by Council Member Brannigan to amend the agenda. Is there anyone in the public wishing to object to the item being added to we the do agenda have this morning? We do have a hand up. Okay. Um, we can listen to the objection and then we will still proceed with the vote. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Campo. Hey. Mr. Brown. Mr. Yes, Brown. Thank Thank you, Mr. Campo. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Can, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to object to this. I don't see how this is an emergency item and cannot have been put on either the regular agenda or the supplemental agenda. And I hope someone will, will object to this and unless there is, is a really good reason for having to do this without any advance notice whatsoever um, and, and why this can't wait until the next council meeting. Um, that this is, you know, we, 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 we have the 24 hour notice requirement for a reason. We have the rules for a reason that require the, the uh, matters to be filed by noon on Monday with the agenda coming out Monday afternoon and a supplemental agenda on Wednesday. I, I, I just object as a matter of principle to adding it to the agenda if there's no true emergency. That's all. Thank you, sir. So, uh, Mayor Zahn, if you would like to say anything. Or I, I, I mean, I, I'm sorry, Councilman. Yeah, go, go ahead, Mayor. I would just like to hold my comments until it comes up for the vote instead of getting to a discussion right this moment. So I'm mm -hmm. sure Mr. Brown will again object at that point, but I would just ask for council support to allow it to go on. I don't think this is the time or the place to have the discussion. I'm well prepared to discuss it when we get to another item, paying tribute to another civic leader. And I will go into detail of why it's being done at that point. That's okay, Councilman. Thank you, that's, that's, that's perfectly fine. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mayor, for your comments. Uh, Mr. Campo, is there anyone else? I don't see any other hands raised, Councilman. Okay, Madam Clerk, we are at the, the voting stage uh, for the council members to vote. Yes, sir. I will call the vote now. Thank Councilman you. Segure. Yay. Councilman Hayes. Yay. Councilman Brannigan. Yes. Councilman Brennan. Yes. Councilman McKenney? Yay. Councilman Wilmot? Yay. Councilman Carroll? Yay. Motion passes 7-0 to amend the agenda to add item 13B. Under the consent agenda, we have item one, approval of minutes, the regular council meeting of February 11, 2021. Item two is approval of alcoholic beverage permit applications. We have none. Item three is approval of bingo and public gathering applications. We have none. Item four is correspondence reports from the mayor, CAO, department head. <coughs> Item 4A, at the request of the administration, a report from Mayor Zahn. Mayor Zahn, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Council Chairman. A um, few things this morning, shouldn't take too long. I uh, want to uh, mention also, to begin my comments, with Mr. Calvin Polk, who is a longtime welder of the City of Canada General Services Department. He retired February 25th. Uh, just yesterday, uh, after about 10 years of service, he's done a great job and his director wanted me to make sure that we announced that because anytime someone has quite a few years with the city of Kenner, we appreciate what they've done for our constituents and also the city of Kenner. So thank you again to Mr. Um, uh, Calvin for what he's done. and We appreciate his hard work. A uh, few things. Um, code enforcement did a sweep with the help of Councilman Carroll's office in District 1. 2,600 block to 2,700 blocks of Jasper and Tupelo, 20, 28 violations, anything ranging from um, a 
abandoned vehicles, abandoned refrigerators, addresses required to illegal structures, unsafe structures. So I appreciate the code department and also um, Greg for helping us with that. Let's keep that area, um, all areas of the city of Kenny, Kenner, but when we have some place with 28 violations, that's something to look at. Um, COVID, I'll start with that first. Vaccines are becoming more readily available. More people here in the city of Kenner are getting vaccinated like other parts of the state country. So we are happy with that. Um, if these things remain like this, the numbers dropping, we, we talk with um, our emergency operations department almost um, every other day to get the numbers. We're getting those numbers. Y'all are seeing those numbers. Good reports coming from New Orleans. Good reports coming from the parish and also the state. Those numbers remain good. I am not giving a date, but I plan on talking to this council three at a time very soon to returning to some sort of in-person um, council meeting. I, I think that will, if this stays like this and the normalcy stays here, we'll probably start talking to y'all after the next council meeting about the timeline of our people getting vaccinated here in the city, the, the employees, besides our essential personnel and you all getting vaccinated. So when we return, we're all vaccinated. Um, of course, it'll go to the Pontchartrain Center first because we'll still have the the um, limitations on people that can attend the council meetings. So we don't want to limit the public. So we need to be in a big arena and do those things like that. So just give us time, but it's on our radar. And I'll talk about one more thing that we're that we are returning to in a few weeks that'll bring some normalcy to recreation. But let me talk about besides the social distancing and not wanting to be the person who limits the public at a live council meeting, why we can't go back to the council chambers. Of course, it's one issue is the social distancing. The other issue is, as you may have, you've been notified by me already, but if you may have heard from the media or through the political grapevine of why the council, the building A is closed. Building A is closed because it has serious damage as a result of years of deferred maintenance, something that goes back before me and Councilman Segura, and that's all I'll say at this point. Deferred maintenance is something that should have been addressed. We should have addressed, the city should have addressed, not this administration, not Councilman Segura, but it should have been addressed before now. I'm addressing it. When I address it, obviously it becomes an issue because I'm addressing it. I'm not trying to shut the building down. I'm trying to make the building safe. We hired a environmental company to come in and they have shown us in, in a report that does toxic mold in the building. The toxic mold is being removed. I had to take the people out. I will continue to take people out every time we find toxic mold in the building. So it's not something that we want to do is wind up at the Pond Train Center with the departments that I've sent over there that were not remote. And again, not all city of Kenneth is remote. Some of us are remote, not everyone is. The things that you needed in building A were not remote. Those things are still not remote. They're at the Pontchartrain Center or building D, the public works building, EOC building. Further testing is underway. We're hoping that we can return that building eventually, um, eventually get ourselves back in there after we've done everything we need to do. But we're gonna go through every building to make sure we don't have any type of toxic mode anyplace else. I talked about returning to some type of normalcy with the council meetings, uh, everybody getting vaccinated. Great news and something Council McKinney has asked me about numerous times and some of you all also, but something we um, have gone back and forth and, and let Council McKinney know that the recreation staff is currently working on developing a 2021 uh, baseball season. I think you just asked just this current week Christy, of where we are with that, you may know already. The announcement for registration will be in the next few weeks. Uh, we have to modify the program, obviously. The good thing is it's outside, but we still got to keep social distancing. So, And we look like we have some um, interest in it. So that's actually good news. We are working on restarting gymnastics, uh, martial arts, and in-person Zumba classes. All these things are based on, guys, as we continue to go through this lull that we're seeing or this drop that we're seeing in the numbers. You can register at kenner.recdesk.com, kenner.recdesk.com. -E -E 
www.thepodcastnetwork.com. So start looking for that because we'll start putting that out very soon. Um, we are today rolling out QSEN and that is rolling out to the public on QSEN. Before I, I go into it, I want to thank Brian Brennan and also Mike Segur. Y'all were our two test subjects. Y'all worked great with y'all's offices with us, your assistants. I appreciate y'all's both y'all's cooperation. It's no reason why we picked District 5 and District 2, everybody else. It's just that we had some conversations with those two council people. And Brian had a number, I know y'all all have a number of things, but Brian and I had a lot of discussion on it, and so did Mike and I, and we thought that was the two best spots to start, South Kenner and also North Kenner. Um, I know Brian and Mike want to say a few words, but let me just say this. It's a work audit um, tracking program. It's been two years in development. Uh, IT and audit, Mike Claus, Adam Campo, my, my executive staff, along with those two council people and all of you all, I know you've all been, I, I don't know, Tom, if you were able to get notified on it. I mean, um, educated on it a little bit, but I think everybody else, and I know Tom, you and I have talked about it, but everybody else has had a class with Deborah Foshi and also my executive staff. Staff, I, I think it's something that's going to be great. I mean, I've seen it. My directors love it. My deputy CEOs love it. Deborah loves it. You guys love it. Y'all can expand on that. But thank everybody who's been part of it. It's something that's going to make constituent services work a lot um, easier, uh, quicker, and better for everybody. Uh, the, the tracking of it, as you as you councilmen have seen, is going to be great. I divided the city up um, in five, the city is five areas, right? So it'll be listed, and I guess Adam or Mike will go into detail on this, it'll be listed District 1 through District 5. So those complaints can come straight in to those, to those districts. But I, I don't care who goes first, Brian, if you want to go, or Mike, you want to go, if y'all could just, from a council level, if y'all could discuss on how you think that it's been beneficial to you um, as a district councilman, I can tell you it's been beneficial to the administration. I appreciate y'all, you all both for helping with that. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. And, that's uh, actually all I have. I know it's kind of quick today, but it's actually all I have unless Brian and Mike want to say something. No, I appreciate that, Mayor. And the mayor had had a, had a number of things to say. I kind of made a little notes about three or four things, so we won't be all over the place. I've put numbers to them. So I would like to first start with the uh, the Q system to let Councilman Segor and Councilman Brennan speak on that, and then we'll move up for your comments if you have any. So Councilman Segor, Brennan can go ahead first. I'll let him. It, go, uh, thank you, thank you, Mike. Thank you, uh, Council Chair, Mayor, the administration. Um, so many people really have been involved behind the scenes. Nicole, Deborah, uh, our assistants, Allison and Tracy, Adam and Mike. Um, it, it's really been awesome. And just, you know, we get emails with orders as they're put in. We get emails as they're closed. Um, our assistants on Mondays are getting Excel reports um, that are just getting better and better as they work them. Allison and Tracy have done a whole lot of work with the administration and with the IT people to, to fine tune these. Um, just for the, the general knowledge of people, they can look at work orders that are uh, <clears throat> pertaining to, pardon me, streetlights, for instance, in District 5. Um, those are available to department heads. And my understanding after speaking with Adam and, and Mike is that um, Classes are going to be held to where those people are learning these reports more fluently. Um, it's just really been a, a, a great, great tool. And um, instead of us trying to call supervisors and call people and follow up with what's open, what's closed, we can see all of that. And, and it's truly, uh, truly been very, very good in our district. Um, Adam, without taking any thunder, I know we spoke yesterday um, and if you don't mind anything you have to say, if you want to wait till councilman your, but I would just ask you, if you don't mind, I know we spoke about the availability and, and I'm sure George is going to love this because I know it rides around and takes pictures of street lights out at night. Um, if you would do, discuss that, um, the, the dropping part of it that we we've discussed recently when when my uh, councilman skewers finished thank you all again for everything you've done to, to enhance this and get this role in for us 
Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Segor. Thank you, Council President. Uh, you, you know, when the city uh, approached us with this QSEN program to allow for uh, having the automatic submission of work orders from not only each of the council members, but also the public, uh, it was very well welcomed by us to accept as, as we knew we needed that tool. Uh, and I was very excited to uh, be part of the beta testing with my office. And, and, and some of that come from, you know, years ago when I was full time with the police department and supervised the IT department there, I instituted many programs that needed to be massaged and worked through. You buy something, it comes from a, a manu a, 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 an application company or, or whoever, but you still got to make it kind of flow in with your business operation. And uh, so that takes the in-house work. So as Councilman Brennan said, and I won't repeat everything he said, because that is true what it does now do. Uh, we now are able to uh, put in our own work orders for the and designate the department that it goes to get updates, as well as getting the explanation of what was done when it was completed. And then the public, that's the key thing here, is that the public will be also able to go right into this and, and put in a complaint uh, of some work that needs to be done because they are the ones that probably see it more in a firsthand nature than all of us because it's in their daily lives around their residences. So we look forward to having them put in these, um, these work orders themselves so that the process um, will take place. And as I said, part of the massaging of the uh, application was, um, was some of what I took a, a lot of time with, with the administration and, and making sure that you've always seen the, the special effects thing where you line up all the dominoes and you knock the first one over and it goes all kind of wonderful things. But the problem is with that is if one domino is out of place, the process stops and the rest doesn't get done. So that was one of the main things that I keyed on was in this process, in this QSEN software, was how do the dominoes always keep knocking the next one down so that everything gets completed. So we spent a lot of time working through the policy as well as the process. So we hope we've got that completed uh, to make sure that the works does make a complete circle and get done and then everybody knows. So again, with that, we're very proud to present this to uh, all of us, particularly the public to get things accomplished uh, in the city better and faster. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Wilmot. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, everything I know about this program is very good. Uh, two years ago or so, we had a, large, a big discussion on it at one of the council meetings, and we launched or, or requested that we try and get this thing enacted. Uh, it's now coming to fruition, which is great. Um, I know my assistant, Michelle, she has been trained on it uh, just recently, and I intend to find out uh, even more of the details as we go along. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's great to have the public be able to um, actually lodge their complaints, uh, as well as uh, us working with the various departments. And, and I look forward to more learning more about it. And I think that it's going to be great for our city. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Any other? Councilwoman McKinney. Yes, thank you, Councilman Carroll. Thank you, Council President. I just wanted to say that I, I was also trained on, my assistant and I were trained this week, and I think it's very, uh, it's very exciting that the residents are gonna be able to report their own and we're gonna be able to track this information. Um, like Councilman Sugar was saying, you know, having this software customized to, uh, for the needs of the residents and the needs of the councilmen uh, is really great. And I think that um, being able to handle this workflow and handle and track what's going on uh, is going to better enable the administration to uh, also, uh, you know, handle workforce issues and making making sure that we have 
um, recommendations for budget and um, as well as workforce, um, you know, the different roles that we need most in the city of Kenner. So I think it's very, it's a very good step in the right direction. And um, the use of technology uh, is, is very important. And I think that, you know, all residents, everyone has access to, the majority of residents have access to cell phones. So um, being able to do this at the, you know, at your, at your fingertips is, um, is a great strike forward and moving the city in the right direction. So thank you. Thank you. And I guess I'll give a few comments before Mr. Campbell speaks. And I too, along with Kelly was, uh, was part of our group <coughs> to get the introduction on the uh, system, which I think will be a benefit for the city along with Ms. Ms. Foshe. And Ms. Foshe, I don't want to put you on the spot, but there are also a couple of uh, institutions that this will not only be something beneficial for internally, but to outside. Do you want to just mention, or do I want? Do you want to hold off before you mention those two? Mr. Uh, President, I would like to test drive the external module before bringing okay. that up. So we'll be working on that next week, uh, and uh, Councilman Brennan is personally involved in that, and we will bring that back at the next council meeting, assuming it works. If you don't hear from me, it means it blew up. But we're we're feeling pretty confident that this is going to work. So that'll be some additional news to bring up next time. Thank you very much. And, and that's why I wanted to, ask. I think it'd be fantastic. And it gives the impression that even though this is a good system, it is not, it's, it's not a short run, it's a long run. So we want to improve as much as we can. Councilman Brennan. Councilman Carroll. Councilman Brennan, could you hold thank on a second? I'm, I'm recognizing I, Councilman Brennan. I'll come right back to you. Councilman Brennan. Thank you. I just want to mention, if it works, I'll be happy to report on it. If it doesn't, then Deborah will be reporting on that, okay? So. Thank you, sir. Councilman Brannigan. Councilman, yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, and I know you can't see me because I'm driving uh, right now. Um, Jessica and I were trained on it. She's got it down pat, and this is definitely a deal where we will be able to go into the future and uh, it'll put our city in a different position, a be much better position on making sure all of the things that, all the problems that come up are taken care of in a timely manner. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. So I think we're, we've uh, talked about the code. I'll take the lead on the code comments from the mayor on the code. And, you know, I'd like to, to first thank the people, particularly within the city of Kenner, uh, from when I first started. Oh, sorry about that. Mr. Campo, you never did answer Councilman Brennan's uh, request. Okay. I, actually, I actually do have a short presentation for the public component of this. It okay. should only be a few minutes, but uh, that way we can get we can get it out there and show the public how this is going to work, just to Thank give it kind of a first look for their, for their eyes. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Let me get my screen share started. Okay, so this is the public site for QSEN where members of the public will be able to go in and enter their own service requests. Uh, the website address is kennerla.qsen.com slash 311. We'll be placing this link on our website as well as our Facebook after the meeting today so that the public has easy access to it. Uh, so nobody really needs to, to rush to write it down. We'll, we'll be publicizing this. Uh, so basically, what you're going to do as a member of the public when you come in here is the first thing you're going to do is go in and create an account. And it can be any email address, and you put in your email address, and we'll email you the rest of the directions. At that point, you're going to come back, and you're going to sign in. Once you sign in, you're going to be able to go up to this tab at the top here where it says Request for Service. And when you get into this portion of the program, you're able to type in a location for it if you want to, and every address within Kenner is loaded. So you can see I've only put in 1801, and it's brought up the three addresses that register as 1801 in Kenner. Uh, so it'll bring those things up for you. You're also able to use this little guy here and drop him into the map wherever you want to to pick a location. That'll bring you into a street view that's coordinated with Google. So if I wanted to say that this street light is out right here, I'm able to grab a pin and I'm able to put it right onto that street light as a location. 
We've also enacted a use my current location tab on this. So if you're actually at the location on your phone or a tablet or some other device doing this, you can drop a pin for your location right there. You're going to click next and then you're going to be able to select the type of issues from some predetermined fields that we have put in. You have animal complaints, their child code complaints, grass, street lights, and then they'll have subdivisions underneath these, these as well for you to determine whether or not it's a metal pole or a wooden pole. And then, of course, we also have the other column. From there, a citizen can go in and give a detailed description and add photographs or files to help it be created as well. And they're just going to click Create Request. That's going to give them a status, and they're going to get a confirmation email showing them what's going on with that request. For, for citizens to be able to follow up on any requests they're able to go to, they go to this tab at the top here where it says My Requests. Click on that tab, and it's going to bring up, we have, we've already pre-entered a few requests in here for people to see, and you can see they're color-coded by what's going on with these actual requests. So I, the one that I just put in under Other is still open because we haven't tested anything to do with it yet. Uh, the, stink, the sinkhole that we entered is in progress. Uh, and then the flashing light that we entered is closed, and closed is red. And when you go into these and click on them individually, you're able to get a more detailed description uh, as a citizen. You, you'd be able to see the ID, the location, the status of the complaint, the entire history of the complaint, and any comments that were entered by anybody on the complaint as well. Uh, and then if I click on this one, you can see that as well. And you can see where we put in the comment request for testing purposes only here. but. As a citizen, you'd be able to see not only your comments, you'd be able to see any comments added by anyone who's updated this file, and you would also be able to add additional comments. And that concludes the QSEN presentation. Councilman Brennan. Thank you, Mr. Campo. Thank you, Adam. I just have it made me think of something. If, if it's a duplicate request. Yes. We, we actually integrate those requests. So if, it, if it's a duplicate request and you're a citizen, you'll both have your own individual file on it. But from the city's perspective, we will only, we, our, our workers will only see it as one request. But again, it's not like it's going to be in two different corners of the world. It'll, Correct. they're not going to be going back out there and it's already done. It's Correct. It's, okay. Correct. We've anticipated that. Correct. I figured you did. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Wilmot. Thank you, Mr. President. Adam, as far as the when the issue comes up, um, it's internally routed to the various departments so they know who's handling it. Could you ex explain that? That is correct, Councilman. We, we have a single point of entry. Uh, one person actually routes these for us, and there is some auto routing functions within it as well from the public component. Thank, thank you, Adam. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, anyone else for Mr. Campo? Thank you, Mr. Campo. Thank you very much. And uh, my last comment based on uh, the, the mayor's comments, and you may address some later on in the uh, the meeting, I wanted to address the his comments on the code. And what I was about to say before I interrupted Mr. Campo was that I'd like to thank the citizens of Kenner for their uh, for their taking the the lead on this. Because when I first got on the council, the attitude was that, you know, when you reported stuff, particularly if it was related to your neighborhood or your neighbor, that it was deemed as something inappropriate and people were uncomfortable, uh, not realizing that it is something that supports the city. And I think people have accepted that and, and everybody, the people who are being uh, addressed for the corrections, because I think the code department, Mr. Muhammad and his staff and the, and the code woman, ladies and gentlemen, are working with the community because also just based on my lack of knowledge or information that I hear about the, the sale of property, real estate in the state of Kenner, we're on an update and that's no coincidence. It, it is because we as a city has taken the town, has taken the baton to improve how we look as a city. That is, that is what it is. And, uh, things don't happen overnight, nor does it happen, you know, by chance. So I think as long as that happens, we will continue. And it may be something this week that in the future we can get a professional. Uh, normally, in the past, I've had Councilwoman, you know, Brannigan to be our resident expert on realtor situation. She's not here. But if we can get someone to maybe to show all the great things that, that based on 
those sales, property costs that we can, you know, we, we need to we need to beat our drum when we can. And I think that'd be something great to do if we're able to get someone to inform the public about how we are progressing and how sales are going up in the city of Kennedy. Thank you very much. Anybody else on that? Or anything else that the mayor may have mentioned in his opening comments? If not. Council President, can, can I add one more thing about the, the QSEN system that I forgot to mention? Yes, sir. I also wanted to just mention that the, the public can report things anonymously within this program. Uh, and, and if you still want feedback and you want to report anonymously, you can register any email that you want. You don't have to provide us with the name or your information in order to do that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Item five is acceptance and rejection of bids requiring an expenditure of less than $5,000. We have none. Item six is change orders requiring an expenditure of less than $5,000. We have none. Item seven is acceptance of committee findings for final passage. We have none. Item eight is subdivision ordinances for final passage. Item 8A is summary ordinance number 12,000. 808, an ordinance approving the plan of resubdivision of lot D3-A1-A -A -A into lots D3-A1-B and D3-A1-C Highway Park subdivision, the WWL Track, Kenner, Jefferson Parish, Louisiana, which lot is owned by Unfold Property Development Group, LLC. Thank you, and I don't see any hands up. So a motion by Council Member Hayes Second by Council Member Wilmot to approve. Council members, please vote. Councilman Hayes? Yay. Councilman Brannigan? Yes. Councilman Brennan? Yes. Councilman McKenney? Yes. Councilman Wilmot? Yay. Councilman Carroll? Yay. Councilman Segure? Yay. Motion passes 7 0 on the consent agenda. Under the public appearance agenda, we have item nine, public hearings for final passage. Item 9A is a public hearing regarding summary ordinance number 12,807. An ordinance approving the plan of resubdivision of lots B-3A-A-1A and B-3A-1-B into lot B-3A-1-B-1, University City, Loyola Track, Kenner Jefferson Parish, Louisiana, which lots are owned by Alluvia Apartments LLC and approving a planned unit development on lot B-3A-1-B-1 to allow the construction of a 260 unit apartment complex and associated parking garages and clubhouse, all located on new lot B-3A-1-B1, University City, Loyola Track, Kenner Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. Motion by Council Member Brennan, second by Councilwoman McKinney to open the public hearing. Council members, please vote. Councilman Brannigan? Yes. Councilman Brennan? Yes. Councilman McKinney? Yes. Councilman Wilmot? Yay. Councilman Carroll? Yay. Councilman Segure? Yay. Councilman Hayes? Yay. Motion passes 7 0 to open your hearing. Mr. Campo, do we have anyone? Excuse me, uh, Council President. Yes, sir. My department has a presentation on this case. Thank you. You're welcome. The development fronts Loyola to the west, I'm sorry, to the east. It is a 260 unit luxury apartment complex with six apartment buildings, two parking garages, one clubhouse plus several additional outdoor amenities. Uh, the subject property fronts Loyola and is bound by Vintage to the north, West Esplanade to the south, West Loyola Drive to the west, and site currently undeveloped. The resubdivision of the property, the subject property is actually governed by Special Ordinance 3264, adopted in July 15, 1982, amended by Special Ordinance 1128 adopted in July 21st, 2016. Both previously approved the St. Jude Hospital Master Plan and included a 450 bed full hospital with offices, retail, bank, and rehabilitation center. The property adjacent to the north is currently undeveloped and is owned by the applicant, as is the property 
adjacent to the west of the site. Also adjacent to the west is the St. Teresa's Medical Complex. Uh, across Loyola to the east uh, is the Chateau, uh, Chateau Lakes Estates Apartment Complex and the property to the south is all part of the uh, hospital complex and zone for the hospital. The Reese subdivision uh, is proposing to combine lot B3A-1-B and lot B-3A-1-A into new lot B-3A-1-B1, which will consist of 413,768 square feet and will measure approximately 555 by 751. The proposed resubdivision meets all the criteria for a simple resubdivision. The applicant is proposing to construct phase one of a new 260 unit apartment complex called Alluvia. Um, this will include the following. The construction of six four-story apartment buildings totaling 283,359 square feet and 260 units. These units will include 156 one-bedroom apartments including nine ADA accessible units and a total of 104 two-bedroom units, including four uh, two-bedroom ADA units. The six apartment buildings will all be done in a similar architectural style. Um, they will be different sizes. The exterior of the buildings will be a combination of composite stone on the bottom and painted cement fiber lap siding on the remainder of the building. There will be exterior covered staircases as well as internal breezeways in each building. Uh, the parking garages. There will be two parking garages constructed. Um, they will total 219,812 square feet and will include 458 parking spots. These will be concrete using poured in place tension concrete. Covered breezeways will connect each apartment building to the parking garage on each level. The top floor on each will be open with a canopy covering uh, all of the parking spaces for the vehicles. There are 260 units plus the, a clubhouse, which will require 420 parking spaces. They are <coughs> providing 482 spaces with 458 located within the garages and 24 spots located within the interior of the site. 27 ADA spices, uh, ADA spaces will be provided 24 in the parking garages and then several within the site. The proposal also includes the construction of a 6,794 square foot multi-use clubhouse with pool and outdoor seating area. The clubhouse will be a single story structure, will be situated on the south east corner of the site, fronting Loyola Boulevard. Um, Exterior will be clad in a combination of stucco and painted cement fiber siding. In addition to the buildings, there will be several amenities provided on site uh, to the residents. These include a dedicated dog park in the northwest corner of the site, a walking path uh, that goes throughout the site and around the perimeter on the interior of the development. This will connect all of the buildings with the parking garages and the clubhouse and allow for easy access of, of residents throughout the site. Um, there's also a water feature proposed on the uh, south side of building, sorry, on the east side of building C, in which the walking path will meander through the water feature. Uh, finally, there will be a sculpture garden included on the east side of the proposed clubhouse. Overall, the site will have four apartment buildings surrounding one of the garages on the northern half of the site and the remaining two apartment buildings oriented on the east and west sides of the second parking garage. The clubhouse will be located along Loyola. Um, there will be a main entrance to the site and, a main, and one dedicated exit to the site on the west side. Uh, at, the main, at the exit point on the west, there will also be the dumpster corrals. These will actually uh, not be serviced from inside the site. They will be serviced from outside of the site off of the uh, road to the rear of the property, to the east side of the property. So they don't have to go into the uh, site. There are two, and let me just say the landscaping plan. Um, there will be 
an incredibly powerful, uh, beautiful landscape of this site, trees all around it. Um, and it has actually exceeded the minimum requirements of our landscape ordinance. There are two signs proposed for the site, one monument sign. It will be located at the entrance at Loyola Boulevard. Uh, it will measure approximately 11 and one and one half inches tall from base to tip and 11, I'm sorry, 11 feet, one and one half inches and 11 feet, four inches at the widest point on the base. The sign will read Aluvi Apartments, firstlake.com with the phone number at the bottom. There will also be an attached sign located right here, right outside uh, on, along the perimeter fencing. And that will say Alluvia with smaller lettering underneath and read apartment homes. There will also be a seven, approximately seven to eight foot tall masonry fence, which will be uh, built to surround the entire site. All the utility companies uh, you know, responded that they had no issues, that they are currently working with the applicant. Uh, the stormwater management plan was submitted as part of this process and it was uh, currently under review, but we have, in my conversations with the public works department, they seem uh, satisfied, but they will finalize everything at the point where it uh, is issued permits. Uh, finally, they also provided a traffic study uh, for the site in which the uh, ITS consulting uh, determined that there were no uh, traffic issues that would develop based on uh, the development of this site. The planning and finally the planning commission recommended approval. That concludes the planning department's presentation. Thank you, director. And uh, Mr. Campo, I, I, we're going to see if there's anyone who want to address this topic and the uh, public. And then after that, if the council or the mayor or staff has anything to say before we vote, we'll address it. So is there anyone in the uh, public that would like to speak, Mr. Campo? We do have two people. Uh, Ms. Stacy Alessandro, you're up first. Ms. Stacy, you have the floor. Hi, can you can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes. yes. Okay, thank, I'm driving. Um, thank you. I just had two uh, two questions. Um, I have no objection to this at all. Um, but I was just wondering if the planning department could let us know if they have received any objections from um, anybody in the public. Um, what what if so? What were those objections to this project? And then my second question is. Will they be required to put in sidewalks prior to getting their occupancy certificate? Um, that's it. That's about two questions. Thank you. So, Ms. Stacy, thanks for your question. And if you don't mind, when we go before we vote, we're going to let the administration and the council members, particularly Councilman Brennan, to address your two oh. questions, if you don't mind, to get it to wait until then. Just Thank you. Uh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank council you. President. Can I just yes, say, we, the planning department has not received any correspondence regarding this um, development in opposition. And to her question regarding the sidewalks, um, I, maybe I didn't mention it. They are constructing a sidewalk along the entire length of the development along Loyola Drive. So that will be part of the proposal. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Campo, the next person. Mr. Greg Taft. Mr. Taff, you have the floor, sir. Mr. Taff, make sure you unmute your microphone. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, I just, what I, really, what I want to say is simply that, you know, this complex is basically going to be near my backyard. And uh, while I'm not, fond of having apartments, you know, in, in that lot. I do want to point out that, you know, in looking at the economic development agenda and what they're trying to do to bring more families to the city, uh, I, I actually don't see any other option to be able to put more families in the city without this apartment complex. And that uh, being said, I, I, while I, you know, as a personal owner may be unhappy, 
I think in the long run, this may be a good vehicle to start attracting more people so that we can get the businesses and increase our taxes so that we can uh, create a, a more family and better environment for the citizens. And that's really all I wanted to say on this topic. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Teff. And I can appreciate that. You know, I, the reality is for all of us, for all of the, the people who live in the state of Kenner, it's always a plus or minus whenever we get something to improve. While on one hand, it improves our sales tax base, but on the other hand, maybe the quality of life is somewhat compromised. It's, it's a balance that as the mayor and the council, we have to look at and, and ensure that we are doing the best that we can. Uh, once any structure is built, it is the responsibility of Mr. Muhammad and his crew to ensure that any code violations or any code thing that comes up, that, that it's addressed. And uh, hopefully we don't have any, but to going in along with the, the director of planning for the landscaping, for everything else, that if we if we address a lot of most of the issues up front, there should be fewer as we go forward. But you know, thanks again for your comments. And I think this is just this is just part of development for any municipality, not only the city of Kenner. But thank you, sir. Mr. Campo, anyone else? I see no other hands, Councilman. Thank you, sir. Motion by Councilman Brennan, second by Council Mayor Zahn. You have a council person and the mayor with their hand up. I'm sorry. Mayor Zahn. Go ahead, Mayor. Mayor Zahn, you're muted. Yes. Sorry Mayor about Zahn. that. It, yes, I'll, I'll let the district council go first. Go ahead, Brian. Okay. Council Brennan, you Thank have the floor. You. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, we, the, the mayor and some members of the administration had toured uh, a facility that these people have done in Elmwood. Uh, it's, it's, just first class. It's absolutely so well done. Um, th this is going to be a catalyst. This is going to be a shot in the arm, not only for Kenner, but that area. Um, it'll be nicely, nicely done. There are minimum income levels to that, that people have to apply for to, to live there. Um, it's, it's really going to be just a, a, a a real plus, and I, I think it is going to be, as Mr. Tepp talked about economic development, yes, this is going to be sales tax, property tax. Um, it, it's it's going to help all of those and everything. I uh, ask my colleagues for their support. If you would like to see the Elmwood location, we'd be happy to try to make arrangements with Mr. Shane and his group to, uh, to allow us to do that. As far as what Ms. Alessandro's questions were, the only... Uh, and I know it was directed to planning. The only complaint or question, it wasn't even a complaint that I've received uh, is the construction and trucks. And I have received a statement that all vendors and suppliers will receive as they're contracted with the company. And basically it's reminding them that Loyola from the interstate or from just uh, north of the interstate all the way up through uh, that construct that area is not a, a truck zone and they're asking them to go to Williams to West Esplanade to Loyola to enter the property and leave the property and uh, are very, very serious about that and are very concerned that they want to be good neighbors and not uh, upset the area up near all the Loyolas and up that way. So again, I ask for everyone's support. I think it's going to be a real plus, and uh, it, it'll it'll really be a good thing for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. And Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind me asking a question as far as it relates to Councilman Brennan's comment, it, it is, and it's good to know about the the uh, traffic situation because that's always going to be a concern. I like to ask Public Works and uh, the Code Department. Is it the responsibility of the builder to provide the signage to identify what the routes are, or is it our responsibility to put up signage to show what the routes should be? And if that's something we should do. Uh, the Public Works Director, please, if you want to answer first. If you unmute, unmute. thank you, sir. It, they already have signs up and down the, the streets noting which which areas and no truck routes. So it'll just be a matter of enforcing those. Okay. 
And uh, Director Muhammad, is this something that your department will, with the code guys, are involved with if, if it is identified that trucks or whatever it is are, are taking a route that has not been identified? We will do our best. We are all constantly in, in contact with the contractors in, in, in to ensure that they're taking the, the proper route. But this is a police matter because the uh, signs are up and they're, they're violating uh, a, a police uh, problem. It's a, it's a police problem. So if a resident identifies something like this, they should report it to the police department. And we'll, we'll keep an eye on it as well. I mean, we're in constant contact with the, the contractors. We're on site every day. This is a big project. We're going to be on site every day. And if we see somebody going the wrong way, we're going to, we're going to bring it to their attention. Thank you. Perfect. Mayor Zahn. Yeah, I was just going to add to the comments of Mr. Teft. And, and look, if anybody's impacted the most, it would be Mr. Teft and his um, neighbors. And we appreciate that support. We had already spoken to Mr. Teft. Um, I think Mr. Teff, I know Mr. Teff sees it the way we see it as administration and Councilman Brennan see it. Um, and as um, Fabro and, and Shane see it, it's an economic engine. Uh, this is going to give me the ability, along with Councilman Brennan, to go back after some national players. Uh, I basically told that to Justin Business Council a few months ago when we presented a proposal to them on what we were doing here in the city of Kenner. And it's going to change the business de demographics. I mean, um, Brian and I have talked about how maybe, you know, we've had goodwill move out of that strip center right there. Maybe now we can attract, maybe attract the bigger groups like box stores, like Trader Joe's and um, Whole Foods. I don't know. But if we have things like this with a, um, a certain scale that, we're, that wants to be built there, I think the economic demographic can change in that area. Remember, you got two schools within one within walking distance, one within a quite short um, driving distance and other subdivisions that will be affected by it. I mean, Brian, you know, Louisiana Trace will take off more than ever now um, when you start to see businesses come in because more residents are coming in. So I'm really happy with this. Um, when Brian and I toured it with Mr. Shane, with my administration, I had already been there for the ribbon cutting as a parish councilman back in Elm, the Elmwood division, um, development. I think this is, I know this is what we need. And it's, people think apartments, they think about the apartments that are existing that are, that we're having to sweep right now or the areas that we're having to go and say, you got to keep because of the, uh, the owners that aren't keeping up with their property. This is different. This is where a lot of the younger generation are going to because they don't want to really own something. So um, I, I, I want to thank Brian for um, endorsing this. The administration endorses it with you. And I'd appreciate all the council having support on this. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman Wilmot, you have the floor, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I want to say about two years ago or so, I learned of this project and, and, and got a lot of details and information on it. Uh, in fact, I think it was at a District 5 um, um, town hall meeting, uh, and it was very well laid out. Everything about it sounded really, really good, still does. I haven't heard any complaints along the way. It's nothing but positive. It looks like it's a win-win for Kenner, so I will be in support of this legislation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilwoman McKinney. Thank you, Council President. I, I just want to express my excitement about this development as well. Um, obviously, I'm the second on it, so I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, but I also just want to ask a quick question, um, and maybe this is of the developers. What is the time frame for them to start actually um, doing the work, and when will we actually see phase one, or when's the plan completion of phase one? So this is James Favreau from Favreau and Chain. Uh, you all, I don't think, can see me. Um, if I may answer that. Yes, sir. Mr. Favreau, you have the floor. Okay. First of all, I'd like to say uh, how grateful Favreau and Chain is uh, to Councilman Brennan, to Mayor Zahn, uh, and to the planning director, Wendell Dufour, uh, for their assistance and encouragement on this project. This is a major undertaking for us. Um, it does follow up on our very successful Bella Ridge, North and South Apartments in Elmwood, which have been uh, very well received by the public and, and very well occupied. Uh, our company has been 
uh, in the development business in Jefferson Parish for 50 years now. We're actually celebrating our 50th anniversary this year, and we're excited to continue to be a part of the neighborhood. Uh, as you know, we own the Lakes of Chateau Estates, north and south, uh, right across the street from this site. And I might also mention that uh, the entire Shane family lives next door to that development uh, on Loyola Drive. So they will be present uh, physically 24 hours a day, seven days a week during the development of this project. Uh, so our personal eyes and ears will be on this uh, in its entirety and throughout its development. And again, we're excited to continue to, to contribute to the growth and the development of the city of Kenner. As far as the timeline goes, uh, our best uh, estimate at this point, where we are exactly is we are in engineering right now. As you can imagine, this is a, a very detailed uh, and complicated project to put on paper. We anticipate that the engineering will be completed by the beginning of this summer. Uh, and we would hope that construction can get underway uh, uh, shortly after that, maybe by the end of the summer, of course, we have to go through the permitting process, et cetera. Uh, we also hope that lumber prices come down significantly during that time. Uh, it's been very difficult uh, to be in the development business at this time with a lot of crazy stuff related to COVID and related to pricing and, and the labor supply. But in 50 years in business, we've seen a lot of differing business conditions and have managed to develop through them, and we hope that will continue to be the case. But again, we want to thank uh, the administration, the council, uh, and the planning department, and in fact, the entire city of Kenner, which has been very supportive of us through the years and of this project now in particular. Uh, we've worked with many of you, probably most of you over the years, and appreciate your continued support, and we are delighted to answer any questions, uh, et cetera. I might mention one other thing. We're not seeking any variances, any uh, exceptions to plans, anything that is out of the ordinary or not according to code and building restrictions in relation to this project. We want to be good citizens. We want to develop responsibility. Any of you that have visited any of our other properties know that we maintain our properties. And in fact, we own them forever. Um, so we have the third generation of our company, uh, of our families in the company uh, now. We're excited about that. And again, we appreciate everybody's support and cooperation. And Mr. Favreau, thank you very much. And thank you for having you and your family for having the confidence in the city of Kenner to, uh, to build here. Uh, Councilwoman McKinney, you have any more questions for Mr. Uh, Favreau? No, sir. But I just, you know, again, thank you for your interest in the, and devotion to Kenner. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions on that subject? I don't see any hands. Oh, Councilman Segor, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Council President. Uh, yeah, I also wanted to just take a moment and um, thank Mr. Favreau, as well as Mr. Shane, as other councilmen have men mentioned, for them to understand the city of Kenner's nature and need for development for both business and residential and how they go together. So for the Favreau-Shane uh, empire to come in and want to build such a uh, fabulous uh, project, which will bring in the residents to Kenner to get our numbers up, which will then certainly cause businesses to want to come and continue growing in the city of Kenner so that we can get that economic development that you have heard all of us tout for some time working on. And these are the things that do come together to tie it all together to make the economic development of city of Kenner grow, both business as well as residential. So uh, I thank Mr. Fabro and Mr. Shane for their confidence to want to spend that much money that this project is going to cost them. As Mr. Fabro said, said the price of wood is up there, and it, it's probably going to stay up there for a while. So for them to still continue to do this project is admirable of them and great for us. So we thank them for putting that investment in the city of Kenner, and so certainly um, I will be supporting this also. Thank you, Councilman. Gregory, this is Councilman Brannigan. Can I yes, say sir. something? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, this is a big deal for the city, as everybody knows. And uh, 
you know, in District 4, we have convertible revitalization working, commercial revitalization working. And uh, uh, when you listen to the people that are dealing with the Rivertown uh, and the Esplanade Mall uh, uh, surveys, it's a situation where they said that we need more development in this type of situation because of the draw that it has for the young people that are coming up. So this is a home run for the city of Kenner. And I just want to thank uh, uh, Mr. Favreau and Mr. Shane for uh, choosing to be here. Uh, when you look at the success of the lakes, it's just unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Mr. Favre, Favreau, uh, excuse me, Councilman Haynes, you have the floor, sir. Councilman Hayes. Oh, obviously, from the comments, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Obviously, Fabro, uh, everybody understands how vital your company is to the success of this city. Again, thank you. Your quality properties. We do have problems with rentals is for absentee ownership. And uh, obviously, that's not the case here. Again, thank you for everything you've done. Uh, this is a PUD. So everything that we've discussed today is not going to change. Uh, it's, a, again, a wonderful property. Again, just thank you so much. We're all going to say the same thing to you. You're very important to the city. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Favreau, you have uh, the last word, sir. Uh, nothing really to add other than we, again, appreciate the support and encouragement uh, and cooperation of the city the mayor, uh, Councilman Brennan, the other council persons, and Wendell Dufour has done a terrific job um, marshalling us through this process. Um, we look forward to uh, a successful project and continuing to participate in the development of the city. Thank you, sir. We do the same. Madam Clerk, uh, help me out. Are we still in the public? We haven't voted on uh, to close the public hearing, have we? No, sir. Uh, we need to okay. vote to close and then vote to approve. Okay, so I don't I don't see any more name hands up. So I think we we have uh, completed that. So motion by Councilman Brennan, second by Councilwoman McKinney to close the public hearing. Council members, please vote. Councilman Brennan. Yes. Councilman McKinney. Yes. Councilman Wilmot. Yay. Councilman Carroll. Yay. Councilman Tavior. Yay. Councilman Hayes. Yay. Councilman Brannigan? Yes. Motion passes 702 closure hearing. Thank you. And before we vote, if anyone else maybe have one last thing to say, now is the time before we vote. If not, uh, gotta motion. It, you got to get it back on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just, yeah. So motion by Council Members Brennan, Council Member Brennan, second by Councilwoman McKinney to approve. Kenny? Yes. Councilman Wilmot? Yay. Councilman Carroll? Yay. Councilman Secure? Yay. Councilman Hayes? Yay. Councilman Brannigan? Yes. Councilman Brannigan? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. <laughs> Item 10 is opening of bids. We have none. Item 11 is reclassification of zoning to final passage, we have none. Item 12 is other ordinances for final passage. Item 12A is summary ordinance number 12,809, an ordinance amending the Kenner Code of Ordinances, chapter 15, section 56A of the Kenner Code of Ordinances to establish a no parking zone on Plantation Drive. Motion by Councilman Carroll, second by Council Member Wilmot. Council members, please vote. Councilman Wilmot. Yay. Councilman Carroll. Yay. Councilman Segure. Yay. Councilman Hayes. Councilman Hayes. Three to have locked up. Yeah, he's frozen. Councilman Brannigan. Yes. Councilman Brennan. Yes. Councilman McKenney. Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Councilman Hayes did not vote. Uh, Mr. Campo, before we move on, if you could 
assist and maybe in some way I'll give him a call, Council Member Hayes. I, Absolutely. I appreciate that. Item 12B, a summary ordinance number 12,810. An ordinance amending the Kennecote Code of Ordinances, Chapter 7, Article 9, Section 7-166 of the Kennecote Code of Ordinances to establish regulation of unnecessary noise. Motion by Council Member Segor, second by Councilwoman McKinney to approve. Council, Council Member, Secretary please. There's no, no. member of the public that wants to speak. Okay, Councilman Segor. You have the floor. Uh, yield to the public first. Okay, Mr. Campo, we're gonna we're gonna let the public in first. Mr. Al Morella. Mr. Morella, you have the Al floor. Morella. Al Morella, forty-two sixty East Royal Drive, Fifth District, forty-nine years. I support this ordinance, and I also want to say I also support strict enforcement in the city of Canada of this ordinance. Ordinance and laws are not worth the paper they're written on if they're not enforced. So I expect strict enforcement and I support this ordinance. Anybody got any comments, any questions? Thank you. Anyone, anyone else? Uh, I'd just like to say, I'd like to thank the code department because we talked about this a couple of meetings ago, maybe uh, for one of the uh, constituents in district one, Ms. Matthews, that brought this to the code department attention. And uh, it was, acted upon swiftly and i think this is good government throughout the whole city of kenner so thank thank the code department thank the administration for their support in this anyone else there, there's no one else from the public okay now we're going to go back to the council member councilman segor you have the floor sir uh thank you council president uh yeah as you mentioned uh when this came up a couple of meetings ago from a citizen uh, complaining about the early wake up by a construction crew on a Saturday. It did resonate with me that I've seen complaints also from others and uh, knew that this was uh, a citywide issue. And so uh, I jumped on it quick and, and dealt and worked with the legal department and code to make sure that um, upon the passes of this code will automatically notify any permit requestee of these new hours of enforcement. Because that was the key, uh, as you mentioned, Councilman Carroll, that without, uh, and Mr. Morrell, thank you too, because it's the paper it's written on is right, not worth it unless we have enforcement. So I've already spoken with code to ensure that they notify anybody requiring a building permit or any kind of construction permit henceforward of these new hours on the weekends and holidays so as not to uh, miss a beat here and, st and allow them to start early. So then code can certainly enforce that uh, upon complaints being received. Uh, and we hope that we have no complaints. So um, with this, um, I certainly urge everyone to help uh, in favor of it to pass. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Ms. Poche, if, uh, if you could help all of us, and we this is something new for everyone throughout the city, builders and homeowners alike, if you could put something together for us so we can maybe uh, not only put on the City of Kenner Facebook page, but our personal Facebook page, and to be consistent with the verbiage, uh, I, I would appreciate that if you or IT could give us something so we can yep. let the public know. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Any more comments? Thank you, Councilman. Carol. Thank you. Thank you, oh, Councilman. Thank for your thank for your support on this, as well as everyone else. So, motion by Councilman Segor, second by Councilwoman McKinney to approve. Council members, please vote. Councilman Carroll. Yay. Councilman Segor. Yay. Councilman Hayes. Yay. Councilman Brannigan? Yes. Councilman Brennan? Yes. Councilman McKenney? Yes. Councilman Wilmot? Yay. Motion passes 7-0. Item 13 is resolutions and motions by council members. <clears throat> Item 13A is a resolution requesting the city of Kenner dedicate the Hispanic Resource Center as the Conchita L. Sully Hispanic Resource Center. 
Motion by Councilwoman McKinney, second by Councilman Hayes to approve. Are there any discussions? Yes, Council Member McKinney, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Council President. Um, I just wanna make a, a, some, a couple of comments because I've been working with the family, uh, Miss Sully's family um, in order to do this. And I just wanted to um, thank them for their support. You know, Miss Conchita Sully was an active business member and civic leader in the city of Kenner for many, many years, 40 years, um, as well as her contributions to that, the state and the nation. You know, she was a realtor um, that was instrumental in the creation of the first certified Hispanic home buyers training program under, Congem under Mayor Kajemi. And she was instrumental in working with the city's leaders to establish the first community Hispanic resource center in the state of Louisiana. As you know, this, the Hispanic Resource Center offers many programs and services for the Kenner's, for Kenner's large Hispanic population. That range from training, learning, English language, um, Spanish-speaking immigrants, interpretation services, um, as well as various, uh, various support on city policies and procedures um, with, with regard to permits, licensing, and other items. Um, when Conchita believed in a cause, I was told by um, someone that when Conchita believed in a cause, in a cause or a person, she was behind them 100%. And she worked tirelessly to expand services for Hispanics in every citizen in the city of Kenner. I was, as I said, I worked with Miss Sully's family to honor uh, Miss Conchita Sully for her passion and commitment to the Hispanic community in Kenner. And I feel like it's appropriate to dedicate the Hispanic Resource Center as the Conchita Sully Hispanic Resource Center. So I, I ask for my colleagues' support. Um, I know all of you um, signed on in support, um, as well as the mayor and the chief of police. So I, I just think that this is a great honor for her and for her family. So I ask that your support. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman <laughs> Wilmot, you have the floor. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. President. Um, and, and I wanted to thank uh, uh, Councilwoman McKinney for her leadership in, in pulling this together. Um, very good, excellent, it, it, and, and it needs to happen. I think that this is this is very good. Um, in addition to that, I wanted to see, uh, Madam Clerk, I don't know how many people are on this um, uh, as authors, but if, if we can, we can open it up to anybody else at this time, I believe, whoever wants to co-author this legislation if they're not on it. Yes, Councilman McKinney has contacted the clerk's office. We have listed all council members as submitting the item. Wonderful, uh, appreciate it. And, and Mayor Zahn, I believe you have something to say, thank you. And I'm glad you brought that up, Councilman Wilmot. I had a discussion with Councilman McKinney earlier um, uh, today that myself and I also spoke with the chief of police. We'd like to also put our names on it because look, I, everything that um, Councilman McKinney said I totally agree with. We we recognized her and another civic leader at the um, all of us did at the last um, council meeting. So having myself and Chief Glazer's name on it, um, which he which he agrees would be um, excellent as long as y'all can uh, agree to do that. So thank you, Councilman McKinney, and Council adding us. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Zahn. And and if you will, uh, Madam Clerk, um, add add those. Uh, elected officials, that'd be great. Thank you. We sure will. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Councilman Wilmot. Thank you, Mayor, for that. And since we've added the chief, you know, I, I think it's appropriate maybe the fire chief to be added as well if he if he would like to, because he's responsible for the safety of our buildings. And I think that is appropriate to add him as well. So That's chief, Mar chief Morris, would you uh, like to be part of this legislation too, sir? Yes, I'm honored by such a suggestion, Councilman. I really appreciate that. Yes, I definitely would like to be a part of this legislation. Thank you very much. We appreciate you too, sir. Any more comments? So without further ado, motion by Councilwoman McKinney, second by Council Member Hayes to approve. Council members, please vote. Councilman Segura. Yay. Councilman Hayes. Yay. Councilman Brannigan? Yes. Councilman Brennan? Yes. Councilman McKenney? Yes. Councilman Wilmot? Yay. Councilman Carroll? Yay. 
Motion passes 7-0. Item 13B is a resolution requesting the City of Kenner dedicate 6th Street between Williams Boulevard and Compromise Street as the Marie Martin Clessy Way. Motion by Council Member Hayes, second by Council Member Segor to approve. Council, excuse me, Mayor Zahn, you have the floor, sir. Yes, thank you, Council Chairman. Uh, another discussion I had with Councilwoman McKinney earlier, and we thought the best way to do this would not be to amend and keep them separate. Um, something that we were thinking of doing, um, and Council McKinney did the Conchita Sully thing, which we obviously all support. Um, I thought that we should recognize these two ladies at the same council meeting. Um, Marie Clessy did a lot of things for the Justin Council on Aging. I don't know the I don't know if naming the building because there's some other people directly here in the city of Kenneth have done some things there at that building to name it Marie Clessy. But I think naming the street, which doesn't affect anybody, it's just the it's just it, it's an addition to Sixth Street. Um, naming that for the things that she did on council on aging in the parish and also here in the city of Kenner is absolutely where that belongs. Um, it, her contributions when I was a parish councilman to Justin council on aging, she was very, very involved in the organization, very instrumental at that time when we thought we were going to build a new building across the street from the, from the YMCA an unincorporated district four unincorporated um, Jefferson Parish right there outside of the Kenner city limits, basically very instrumental. Had I stayed on the council, I think we would have actually gotten that building built. Uh, I know Councilman Impostata has done other things with the property that are now needed to be done, but that shows her commitment to Jefferson council on aging. That is our building right here in district one. Uh, as you well know, all council, but particularly you, council, Councilman um, uh, Carol, naming that little strip of um, street, the Marie Clessy Way. This has been done in District 4 in the past for John Laverine, John Laverine Way. It's been done before the Nick and Jemmy building was named Nick and Jemmy building, the police headquarters. We had Nick and Jemmy Drive, and I think it's still there. It's little strips of property that won't affect anybody's addresses. It won't affect anyone's um, uh, driver's license that have to be changed. It's just a tribute to a lady who has been a realtor, who has been a, I believe, a teacher at one time, who has been a state form agent and a civic leader and a friend to everyone probably on the Zoom and a lot of people in the city of Kenner. So by doing this, yeah, I mean, it was a comment. This is not an emergency. No, you're right. It's not an emergency. It's called courtesy. And I think it's um, very... <laughs> inappropriate to oppose this because it's on it's it's on y'all's agenda items from the floor if if people don't like items from the floor and i don't want to get into that then take it off the agenda but it's on the it's on the agenda it's not an emergency it's a courtesy so i ask for everyone's courtesy and respect to marie clessy and let's not take that away because it wasn't submitted before 12 o'clock on wednesday that's all I have to say. I appreciate the council support. It, look, Conchita, Maria, I mean, Marie, it, it's two things that I think should be done at the same time. And I appreciate Council McKinney allowing us to put this on right after it um, from the floor and everyone's support on this. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mayor. And I, Council Member uh, Hayes, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I totally agree with the mayor. These individuals were major business and civic leaders for nearly 40 years. And uh, both sold products, but they didn't just sell a product. They were looked at as trusted advisors in their respective fields. Obviously as a realtor, one as an insurance individual. What they did was educate. Marie was an educator for eight years before she started as one of the first female insurance agencies from 1980. I'm old enough to remember what happened between late 70s and 80s. 
Many females didn't even throw us in that time. These people were pioneers. It's important to know that. Miss Sully, she was head of our Jefferson, president of the Jefferson Board of Realtors. She helped the merger, the New Orleans Metropolitan Association of Realtors. I mean, they, they did it all. And it is totally appropriate that we recognize. But more importantly, they educated people in the projects that they were involved in. Both are very, when you sell a home, when you buy a home, she educated the people on the particulars of that transaction. Same thing as Marie, when you bought insurance, be it car, be it home, any type of insurance, you were educated. And that is very understand. So many, many people in this city and elsewhere owe a big debt of gratitude to both of these. And I just want to give uh, that shout out. And believe me, this vote that we're doing now is totally appropriate. Thank you, Councilman. And uh, Councilman Carroll. Uh, Council, Councilman Brannigan, hold on one second. Councilman Segur. Okay. okay, thank you. All right. Councilman Segur. Thank you, Councilman Carroll. Um, you know, I, I, I do take a, a, a sad point here. If you look behind me, my banner is Women's History Month. I have this because, and I was going to get into this later, but as we wind down February, which is Black History Month, and first of March is Women's History Month. And um, here we are celebrating, unfortunately, the passing of two women who have had a big history here in the city of Kenner. And to uh, someone, particularly Mr. Brown, try to stop us from doing this today because of it not being an emergency. Well, I look at it as it is an emergency. We want to get this passed. This, the legislation passed to recognize these two women's input in the city of Kenner. In fact, that uh, yes, uh, uh, we were a little late because of the timeline on Wednesday to make the decisions on what would be best for uh, Ms. Classy. Uh, and then we finally put it together and got everything going. And so uh, we do put it up as from the floor which allows and requires a unanimous vote. We got that unanimous vote to put it on the floor. I'm hoping we have a unanimous vote to pass it. But the thing is, is that this is what it's about, recognizing the two great women for the wonderful things that they have done in our city and that they do not be lost in uh, history with not being recognized for what they've done. So I clearly, uh, uh, all this an emergency and wanted make so um, and let them be part of the history and women forever and ever. So I look forward to all of my colleagues joining. Yeah. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Brannigan. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that these two ladies were uh, instrumental in our city. And the bottom line is when you look at the different types of people, there are three different types of people, people that make things happen, people that watch things happen, and people that have no idea what's happening. These two ladies were definitely people that made things happen, happen as you can see from their track records. And uh, I am full in full support of what we are doing. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. <clears throat> So I don't see any more hands, but I like to comment. I like to uh, thank the mayor for for bringing this up, and uh, also we had the mayor and I had a conversation more extensive, extensive as it relates to other subjects relating to this. So we look forward to talking about that in the future going forward to be able to be proactive with certain things, and, and I totally agree with that for both ladies. Uh, and I also would like to comment on Mr. Brown's comment from my personal perspective. Uh, my personal perspective, Mr. Brown, I never got the, the, 
the feeling that he was against Ms. Plessy or the Sandy Center. I never got that. But I can appreciate Mr. Brown is a parliamentarian specialist, and his concern was based on the process from that standpoint. It is obviously we needed a unanimous from all of us, the mayor, ensure that so it wouldn't look like somebody we were against it. So I can appreciate Mr. Brown have asked him in the past because of his expertise, his number of years as a parliamentarian. So I don't think he was against it, but he wants us to be in line, which is great. And as he and I have had conversations, every municipality has rules that they have to follow. There are standards for rules, but every municipality, we're not a carbon copy of anyone. So there are some things because we are the city of Kenner, even if it's a little shaded on the rule that if we are consistent with it, we can do it. So Mr. Brown, thank you for your comments. Thank you for uh, supporting us from that standpoint and, and always being open to, to address that and to support us as we go forward because there are times we, we need to hear about it and to be able to have a reasonable reason why we want to do what we want to do. Councilwoman McKinney, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Council President. Um, I'll, I'll be brief. I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, uh, Ms. Ms. Clessy was uh, was a mentor of mine. I worked closely with her on the Kenner Civic League uh, when we created it, when she created it. Um, and, and she also supported me in my uh, election campaign. So, you know, she has she has a lot of community involvement. She's uh, from many different, from different positions. She's been very active in the community. And I think this is uh, a very, very tribute to her and to all of her involvements in the community. Uh, in the community. And I hope that her, um, her daughters and her family appreciate that um, and are in accordance with, uh, with this recognition and proud of their mother's achievements. And thank you. Kind of broke up at the end, but thank you. Any more comments? Councilman, Any? Mr. Brown has his hand up as well, but I believe the mayor has a comment. All right, yeah, Mayor, you have the floor. Just when we go to do it, I just asked the council clerk to add, obviously, my name's on it, but also the two chiefs. Like, I've already spoken with the um, chief of police, and I, I know the fire chief will be in support of that. So just, yeah. Natalie, just make sure you have all those three names added to the, if it's all seven council people, add to the seven council people. Yes, Thank sir, you. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Mr. Campo, who, who is it that would like to speak? Mr. Richard Brown. Mr. Brown, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Campo. Uh, Mr. President, thank you for the comment you made about my reason for objecting. You were exactly right. Uh, I have no problem whatsoever with, with naming something after Marie Clessy. She was a very good friend of mine. We were friends for probably 20 years. Uh, we've worked together on many projects. We've worked together through the, the, what's now Kenner Business Association. Before that, K, uh, KPW, Kenner, Prof uh, Kenner Prof Professional Women's Association, which had male members. We worked together to put on political forums. We worked together on many projects. She was also our personal insurance agent. And, and I, I am glad that we are honoring her and recognizing her in this way. And, and the same with Conchita Sully. I've known Conchita and her husband for many years, probably 15, 15 years and, and their daughter, Christina. So I, I have no problem with, with what the city is doing. My issue was with the process. And in fact, I don't think I actually heard the name of who the, uh, the motion was to dedicate that street to. The, the meeting had just come to order. I was not yet sitting down at my computer. I heard the motion to amend the agenda, to add an item, and that always sets me off. I'm, I'm always concerned when something is being added to the agenda uh, because we did the open meetings law and the, the, the local rules and charter are very clear in how things are done. And yes, it can be done with a unanimous vote. So my, my objection was purely to the process, and it did not seem like naming anything after anyone was something that needed to be taken up with absolutely no prior notice. It, it, it may well be that, that if there was notice, somebody might have thought of someone more deserving 
than Marie Clessy. I, I rather doubt it. I think she's extremely deserving. So I want it known. My, my objection was not to her. It was it was to the process and to adding something to the agenda without without notice. And and with that said, I think you have, have recognized and honored two very deserving people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I see no other hands up. So motion by Council Member Hayes, second by Council Member Segor to approve. Council members, please vote. Councilman Hayes. Yay. Councilman Brannigan. Yes. Councilman Brennan? Yes. Councilman McKenney? Yes. Councilman Wilmot? Yay. Councilman Carroll? Yay. Councilman Segura? Yay. Motion passes 7-0. Item 15A is summary ordinance not, I'm sorry, item 14 is items removed from the consent agenda. We have none. Item 15 is acceptance of contracts and similar matters approved by the mayor. Item 15A is summary ordinance number 12,811, an ordinance ratifying the emergency replacement of the motors for treatment plant north blowers numbers one and two by Motors and Control Incorporated in the amount of $28,692 for the Department of Wastewater. Motion by Council Member Brannigan, second by Councilwoman McKinney to approve. Council members, please vote. Hold on. Mayor, did you have your uh, hands up? No, I didn't. I'm sorry. I was scratching my face. Thank you, though. Okay. So, uh, Madam Clerk? Councilman Brannigan? Yes. Councilman Brennan? Yes. Councilman McKenney? Yes. Councilman Wilmot? Yay. Councilman Carroll? Yay. Councilman Muir? Yay. Councilman Hayes? Yay. Motion passes 7-0. Mr. President, someone from the public would like to address the next item on the agenda uh, before you. we vote, please. Item 15B is a resolution approving amendment number one to the agreement with Ram J Construction LLC dated July 24, 2020 to provide drainage maintenance on an as needed basis in accordance with seal bid number 20-6549, which increases the not to exceed amount by $200,000 annually for the Department of Public Works. Motion by Councilman Carroll, second by Council Member Wilmot. Mr. Campo, who is it that would like to speak? Mr. Al Morella. Mr. Morella, you have the floor, sir. Al Morella, 4260 East Loyola Drive, 5th District, 49 years. Uh, I like an explanation as to what this increase is from. Thank Councilman you, Mr. Carroll, Morella. I can handle that whenever, if you approve. Yes, sir. Mr. Pitfield, you have yes, the floor. Yes, sir. So this is the same thing, Mr. Morella, as you asked at the last meeting. It's a raising of the cap of our contract. Um, unfortunately, we can't predict when we have issues on our streets that need to be repaired. Uh, we currently are about to um, max out that contract, so we need to raise the cap so we can continue to fill those damaged streaks that I'm sure you'll be you'll let us know about if we don't. So we're trying to stay ahead of that, but unfortunately, we need the contract funding there to make it happen. Thank okay, you, thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Pitfield. So if if not today, but if you can just email us something where we are right now based on our current budget, uh, we'll I would like to see that, and I'm sure everybody else since Mr. Morella brought it up as it relates to where we are now and to ensure that you know, where we are going forward. I'd appreciate that. Did Mr. Pitfield hear me? Yes, I'm sorry, I'm trying to unmute, yes, sir. Yeah, okay, so yeah, if you can do that, I'd appreciate it, thank you. So again, motion by Councilman Carroll, second by Council Member Wilmot to approve. Council members, please vote. Councilman Brennan? Yes. Councilman McKenney? Yes. Councilman Wilma? Yay. Councilman Carroll? Yay. Councilman Segur? Yay. Councilman Hayes? Yay. Councilman Brannigan? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Item 16 is ordinances and resolutions in summary for first reading. 
Item 16A is an ordinance approving amendment number one to the agreement with Digital Engineering and Imaging Incorporated regarding the wastewater department transition program to extend the term of the agreement by two years and increase the not to exceed amount by $20,000 for the Department of Public Works. Item 17 is reports from the council and or special committees. We have, oh, Councilman Segur has his hand up. Councilman Segura, you have the floor. Thank you, Council President. Uh, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, uh, as you see behind me, uh, Women's History Month starts March 1st. Uh, as we wind down February being Black History Month, I wanna thank Councilman Carroll uh, for the postings that he made throughout the month on his social media about um, the history of the Black community, as well as the postings the administration made and with that, as we move into March being Women's History Month, I would hope that the administration will do the same with um, things that they can post as people in the city of, women in the city of Kenner who have been in our history, as we just talked about the two ladies uh, who will now be part of that illustrious group. Um, as you look around this screen and you look around your whole life, you will see that women are all around and we certainly take pride, I do particularly, in the work that they contribute to our community and our life. And so with that, I look forward to celebrating this next month in recognition of them. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Anyone else? I don't see any hand, but I'd just like to say thank you, Councilman Segur, for those uh, comments, kind words. And I'd like to personally thank uh, the General Service Department, along with Mr. Pitfield and everyone, uh, and especially community development that helped support it the entire month of Black history with our program, uh, which was kind of diluted because of COVID-19, but also to the, 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 uh, the pictures, the imagery, and the uh, museum. So thanks again, everybody, for their support, the administration, the mayor, everyone. We had to adjust a little bit, but but we did do something, and we look forward to doing more and for next year as we look forward, as Councilman Segura has alluded to, for the Women Month next month in March. And none of us would be here today without a woman, so obviously. Uh, we, can, we cannot support that. You know, that's what I mean. Councilman Segura, you have to uh, Yeah, you reminded me. I meant to say that because all of us have a mother, and without yeah. a mother, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. We act like a mother sometimes, but none of us have a mother, that's for sure. So uh, anybody else? I do not see any more hands. Madam Clerk. Item 18 is new business. We have none. Item 19 is unfinished business and a motions to reconsider or remove from a table position. We have none. Item 20 is persons wishing to address the council on special subject matters. Mr. Campo. Mr. Al Morella, you're up first. Mr. Morella, you have the floor, Al sir. Morella. Al Morella, 426 East Royal Road Drive, 5th District, 49 years. Coronavirus numbers as of Monday, the 22nd. Total tests, 5,795,188. Positive cases, 366,302. Negative cases, 5,428,000. 886 recovery 396,834 as of today total positive cases in Jefferson Parish 41,164 I like an update from Doug Dope when I'm done speaking uh, on how many of those cases are in Kennel. Now I want to direct this to you Councilman Carroll at the last council meeting I find it odd I find it odd that you're the only person I've been giving these numbers numbers now for a few months that took this long to comprehend what I was referring to. But I understand, Councilman Carroll, sometimes, okay? One more thing, Councilman Carroll. Uh, I suggest that you open the floor for public comment and comply with the open meetings laws that any item on this agenda that has to be voted on by this council, the public has a right to speak on that item. And I would suggest that you comply with the open meetings laws to avoid some problems here. Okay? Now, 
I want to talk about this investigative report that's been going on for three nights now on Channel 4 concerning allegations uh, by the city of New Orleans uh, against our co enforcement director, Dave Mohammed, uh, pertaining to his second job. Now, uh, first of all, the report is filled with contradictions, and, and I, could, uh, I, I expect. Dave Muhammad to aggressively defend his integrity and the integrity of the city of Kenna against these allegations. Now, one more thing in closing. At the last council meeting, Marathon, I did a, a special mention and a tribute to our commander, Marty Briggs, and talked to you about the proclamation. You said you was in the process of working on it. Okay, I got in touch with his family. They cleared it, they said it's okay, they wanted me to handle it. I tried to call you and left you a message on your cell phone and never got a return call. So now we're gonna honor people that, that did a lot of uh, community service in our community. Monty Briggs be honored as well. And I'd like to get an update on your work so far as to what's going on with that, with that proclamation. Well, I didn't. Anybody I didn't. Any Thank you, Mr. Morello. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you're first. Yeah, Mr. Morello, I, I didn't get a um a message from you. There was no message left because my my phone doesn't take messages. So, um, you're in my phone. Um, maybe you have the wrong number. I will call. I'll reach out to you. Um, and I do want to work with you with that, but there was no message left. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And Mr. Morella, as always, thank you for your comments. I uh, always appreciate that. But I would like to say that, you know, my reasoning for not addressing it earlier, I, I hope that you would, would, would recognize that what you were saying was incorrect. I am not a, a, as obtuse as you obviously are based on your comments because that is not an official name for it. And I believe as the city of Kenner and the council meeting, we should not say things unless it, 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 is, it merits and it shows the professionalism, professionalism of our group. You can maintain that perfect, perfectly, but that is not what the city of Kenner is about. And to be derogatory toward an ethnic group and say that is, is, is deplorable and we should never entertain you with that. We thought maybe you would get it better, but my comments, obviously not because you're still saying it. So you can maintain that, but here at the council meeting, we would hope that you wouldn't do that here. So thank you very much, sir. Mr. Campo, you have, who's next? Mr. Richard Brown. Mr. Brown, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Um, two or three things. First off, I want to, to congratulate the council on approving the apartment complexes. I did not speak on that issue um, because I knew already that, that the council was pretty much uniformly in support of it and there was no real opposition and it really wasn't controversial. Many of us have known for, for a year or two that this was coming. So I think it'll be very good for Kenner that it's development that I think we need and it's in an area where we, we need it. Um, I would like for someone to respond later as to the status of the fire station on Loyola. We haven't heard anything about it for a while. But the main thing I want to say <clears throat> and what I want to spend the remainder of my time on is the something I brought up at the last or spoken on at the last two council meetings. And that's the fact that the city of Kenner settled Bob Romelli's lawsuit against the city in federal court and paid $215,000 in damages to to Ramelli for trying to accuse him of what 20 something counts of, of um, littering and, and, and other charges and the city settled that. But the city attorney has apparently kept maintaining that that's actually part of, of other proceedings and that he can't talk about it. However, the settlement agreement is public. It is a public record. I've got a copy of it and it's very clear. And I'm going to read just three short paragraphs from it that 
don't take much time and I can do it within my three minutes. And the pertinent parts are, and this is the federal court suit where Ramelli sued the city. You have, a, so, minute. You have a minute, Mr. Brown. So thank just you. Okay, thank you. Um, whereas the parties do desire to compromise and settle the federal claims by the plaintiffs against the defendants in the federal lawsuit, but do not intend for that settlement agreement in any way to affect or release any claims or allegations associated by them against each other, um, rising out of the contract, um, regarding the, the lawsuits and the 24th JDC, which is state court. One other key paragraph, the defendant shall tender the plaintiffs $215,000. This payment is being made in connection with the contract and in no way shall discharge, release, offset, or otherwise affect the Louisiana claims and the 24th JDC. Um, and then the final key paragraph, this settlement agreement shall encompass only claims asserted in the federal lawsuit. All state law claims, disputes, causes of action, damages, or liabilities of any nature or any kind, whether presently asserted or raised in the future, including but not limited to any claims arising out of or related to the contract. Mr. Brown, that's... That's your minute. That's, okay. Well, it says these are expressly reserved and excluded from this. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I appreciate that. I do not see. Is there anyone else that would Stacey, like to speak? Stacy Alessandro has her hand raised. Ms. Stacy, you have the floor. <laughs> Ms. Stacy, you have to unmute your microphone. Hello, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, hi, um, so thank you, uh, Council President. Um, I want to tell you, first of all, thank you for addressing the concept of professionalism during these meetings. Um, that really needs to be addressed because the way that the mayor and some council members speak to members of the public, namely myself and Mr. Richard Brown, when anytime we bring something up, a legitimate concern that we have, inevitably, he comes back during our time and says rude and snide and condescending comments to us. And it's, it's very unprofessional, it's very childlike, and I'm really tired of it happening. But on to my next point, um, to ask what, what Mr. Richard Brown just brought up, that $215,000 that we paid to Bob Ramelli, many people are saying that that is just damages. Basically, uh, the city was sued for harassing Bob Ramelli, and then they settled with him and gave him $215,000 of our money, taxpayer money. And that settlement agreement, which is public record right now, says that it does not affect any other lawsuit. Mr. Ramelli is suing us in 24th JDC for every bit of money that we owe him. None of that has been settled. So if we're being sued for every bit of money we owed him under the contract, then what did this $215,000 pay? City Attorney Rapier said it was dollars the city already owed. What did we owe it for? Can you please get us an answer, Council President? What did the citizens receive? What services did we receive for that $215,000? What bill got paid? What did we get for that money? Please get somebody to answer that question. Maybe it's not a legal question. Maybe we can get somebody from the uh, finance department to answer us. What did they pay with that money, the $215,000? Um, how much time do I have left, Council President? Uh, you got about 30 seconds. Okay, and also, can you also, at this meeting, ask Chief Morris, how does he feel about his firemen? <clears throat> Two years after we bought, bought that piece of property and the state gave us the money to build a firehouse in District 1, that his boys are sitting there in a vacant lot in a travel trailer, a temporary trailer, um, 
that they have to be in during freezes and storms and hurricanes and everything else in this temporary trailer. It doesn't even have any pavement. It's just got gravel there. I'm sure it gets sloppy when it rains. Can you ask the chief how does he feel about his men being in that situation when the state gave us money two years ago to build them a, t a permanent fire station? So <clears throat> two questions uh, to, to get answers to council president. What did we get that for that 215,000 and can the chief address the lack of a fire station? So, thank, thank you. Thank you, you Ms. Stacy. I appreciate again, your, your comments and concerns, but as it relates to the attorney uh, rapier, uh, or any attorney, I am not an attorney. I'm gonna to have to respect the attorney's position and, and on, on his decision that he's come to as much as I would like to know. But if, he, if he's telling me this and I'm not an attorney, I need to respect his position on this. And as we move forward, hopefully we can get more information. The information is like Mr. Brown said, posted on the uh, website. So anyone that would like to read it can go, can go read it and come to a conclusion and and have their position but you know I, I just i don't think it is appropriate for me to try to be an attorney and force him to say something and i can't force anybody to say anything uh and mainly because i'm not an attorney and i think that you can come and ask every council meeting maybe things will change and i would i would want you to do that the second comment for chief morris i it's a good segue because i Miss Miss Fosha, you have the floor. If I may, let's have the engineers who can answer that question. The outside engineers working on that project at the next council meeting. To which which question are you referring to, Miss Fosha? Fire station. The fire the fire station. Okay, so and that's Ms. that's what I was gonna that's what I was gonna suggest. Let us. I mean, I think we need to educate the the council first on where we are with that. Um, there's been some bumps in the road that we've had to overcome. Um, so if we get the engineers in and the contractor in to let you, let everybody know where we're going with it, that's, that's not a problem at all. It's a, it's, that is a legitimate, um, uh, timeline that we need to share with the public and also with the council, but sharing things with the council, council chairman, I, I do think that since the last council meeting, I think our attorney, all of our attorney has shared some of the details and also some of the things going on with that lawsuit with y'all. So I appreciate y'all you know, asking for it and sharing that with you. Thank you. And, and thank you, Ms. Ms. Fosche. As, as, as far as um, comments made by me, look, I make many comments on these council meetings, but I make comments the way, my comments are a reflection of the way the question is, is worded toward me. So I, I think there's a lot of people on these meetings that appreciate my comments because they probably ask comments in an appropriate manner. <clears throat> Thank you. And uh, Ms. Stacy, as far as it relates to the information on the fire station, I think it would be appropriate to get a, a more conclusive position where we are right now. The chief can say something, but from an infrastructure standpoint, uh, I, I, would, I think it would be better for the next meeting to have a full presentation on all aspects of it. Uh, Obviously, I was going to ask the chief to talk about some other things as it relates to the Kenner Fire Department, and he is obviously able to address something uh, as it relates to him and his relationship with the firemen, if he would like to. So if you don't mind to, to hold off until next meeting to get a more conclusive uh, presentation on the fire station, I would ask you to do that. You'll have it. Ms. Stacy, Adam, is she, did she leave or did she hear what I said? She's still here. Stacy, you're, you're Oh, thank, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Councilman Carroll. And I truly look forward to the next meeting to having a, a presentation. And um, I think it's long overdue. You know, it's been two years, but I appreciate that we're going to have that. I'm looking forward to it. Um, would you mind just allowing the chief just a minute to just to tell us, you know, his feelings on the current situation and, and, and why it's going to be needed, what we're going to be doing. I, I'd like to know, but, you know, just an update on their situation, the firemen I, and in that location. I, I just, just 
like to hear from the chief. I, I'm tired of everybody else jumping in whenever somebody asks a question. We want to hear from somebody specific. Everybody else jumps in and cuts us off to make sure that that doesn't happen. Why can't people talk? We have these, you know, chiefs and department heads, but they never get to talk because everybody jumps in and stops it from happening. Because, it, you know, I'd like okay. to hear from the chief about the impact for the last two years of what his firemen have had to go through. Thank you. Council if, Chairman. If, if, yeah, Mayor Holmes, I would say, uh, Ms. Stacy, if you heard my other comments, I was about to reference to treat the chief to be able to address a certain things with the opportunity to speak what he feel comfortable talking about. So right after the mayor, I will turn it over to the chief to be able to uh, to answer some things. Mayor Zahn. I, Council Chairman, I, I would love to have the chief uh, talk to you about your questions, but I don't think it's cutting off the public. I think it's having the chief prepared um, to give a presentation along with the other entities involved so that there's no misunderstandings. I don't, I, to my knowledge, I don't think this is a question and answer period. I think this is a comment period of the public. So when we're, when we're asked a question, we have no problem answering it, even though it's, it's just a comment period of the public. And correct me if I'm wrong, city attorney, I believe it's just a comment period. I've asked the city attorney to weigh in on that, but it doesn't seem like he has done that. I would appreciate him weighing in on that as my attorney like the rest of the council. Um, but we have no problem answering those questions, but give us the opportunity, Council Chairman, to come back with a complete presentation. This administration is absolutely 100% in favor of, and has always been an administration that gives thorough presentations. I don't know why all of a sudden it's an issue that if we wanna give a presentation on the fire station, which we have had internally, internal conversations as an executive staff, that we need to give you all, particularly you and Councilman Brennan and two at lodges, because your districts are mostly affected by that, give you the presentation that you deserve and give the public the presentation they preserve, deserve. To, to have the chief answer anything, and you prepare, I know you prepared the chief already for your questions. I totally appreciate that. That's what we wanna do. We wanna have a prepared presentation because some members of the public might take those, you know, presentations we give. And if it's not everything that we need to say, there's a thousand more questions that come or there could be possibly accusations that come from that. So if, if you could appreciate, and I'm sure you do, that we'd like to come back with a thorough presentation next council meeting, you're going to have it, council chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, you know, I'm going to repeat again what I said, and, and I was speaking directly to Ms. Stacy to ask for her appreciation to not to put the chief on the spot. I, I right. thought I said that we are gonna come back next meeting with a more conclusive presentation. I, I said that also, and that I also said that it was a good segue for me to give the chief the floor to talk right. about a couple of new stuff that he's have uh, uh, something to address and then to be able to address his personal relationship to however length he want to do it and to prepare us next meeting for the comments for, for Ms. Stacy. So I, I that's, agree. That's where we at. I think Ms. Stacy agreed to that. And uh, I think the chief understood that. And that is, so I just repeated it again and I got you. And I think it is important. Mr. Uh, Attorney, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Council President. Yeah, I just want to, to the mayor had asked the question, I, the proper time hadn't come up to, to answer that question. But this, according to your rules, this is, this is the time for people to address the council. It is not designed, at least as the way the rule is written, to, uh, to, uh, to be a question and answer period. It's, it's to address the council. It's not to ask the council questions. It's not to ask the administration questions. So while I believe everybody wants to be as informative as they can, um, the thought that, that it, it is a banter and, 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 and question and answer back period is not what, at least as the way your rule is written, designed to be. Thank you, Attorney. And, you know, for my position as the, the council chairman, and I'm sure maybe other people will look at it differently, when we give the opportunity for the constituents to speak, uh, to ask, to, to, to make a comment, there are some comments that, that deserve respectfully an answer to it. So 
it's not it may not start off as a as a back and forth and we have three minutes to ensure and it's my responsibility to make sure the bantering is not going back and forth uh, nor do I have a problem asking each <laughs> council person or administrative to answer the question now if they choose not to I don't have the authority or the power to make them speak but I will ask them and then if they choose not to then we will move on but I appreciate your concerns about that uh, to be able to monitor this and, and and always stay on top of it to make sure it's not a back and forth but I but I am but I would like to hear people make comments that sometime it's a thin line between back and forth and wanting a uh, respectable answer back and we'll try to do that thank you sir so uh, chief without any further ado first the the, the information as it relates to the City of Kenner and the surrounding area, the new information that you want to briefly talk about, I would appreciate that, sir. Thank you, uh, Council President. Uh, what I, what we at the Kenner Fire Department are attempting to do is grow the department and uh, train future firefighters to provide a much better service to the community. Uh, the state examiner puts out firefighter entry exams periodically throughout the state. And they have one coming here next month, March 16th, 17th, they're doing the dual test. But the registration window is was very short. They had notified us on the 19th and the registration window was open and the registration window closed on the 24th. So I reached out to the councilman and to uh, Mr. Raphael Sadi to get members of their specific communities notified of the registration window so that members of those uh, we can attract more minorities and females into the into the census of the fire service and what i'm attempting to do is uh have training a training session for those members and all members of the community that would be interested in taking the exam of becoming a firefighter uh, to prepare them for what the test is like so they could be at ease taking the test and hopefully perform very well on the test and become members of the fire service. So going forward uh, is something I will continue for each test coming up that the state examiner gives for entrance firefighters. So we can continue to provide a high level of product that we give to the community, a high level of service that we give to the community. So we'll uh, work with KTV and all the members, all the civic associations to get the word out of when we're doing uh, examination, testing, training, and those sorts of preparation tests to get more members involved. Thank you, sir. And I, I will take the lead. There, There's a, a flyer that I posted on my Facebook account that I will share with all my fellow council members and also <clears throat> take the responsibility to, as you and I move forward with this project, to inform them with any flyers, any dates, any information, any testing. I will, I will ensure that myself and Kelly pass that information on to the administration and the council members. I appreciate that. And as my other comments related to the mayor and to Ms. Stacy, I think it would be appropriate for your comments to be attached to that overall presentation. And then you would be able to address it at 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 your or at your just this you know, what you feel should be addressed and how it should be addressed from a personal standpoint as the chief and as the leader of that organization. So I appreciate that. And I hope Ms. Stacy can, can appreciate that. And we look forward to next meeting uh, to have that presentation. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any, does someone have their hand up? I do not no see- No the public council president. We have, we have someone else? No, nobody else from the public. Thank you, Mr. Campo. So without further ado, may we have a motion to close. Motion by Councilman Segor, second by Councilman Brannigan to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Have a great weekend. Everybody Thank have you. a good weekend.